Hello, this is Rod Martin coming to you from Grace Hall for rodmartin.org. And today we're talking about perhaps a little bit offbeat topic, but one that is more important by the day. Why your English teacher was wrong and why you should capitalize the word earth. I'll admit it's been a while since my last English class, but like most of you, I was taught that you should never capitalize the word earth, or for that matter, moon or sun. I know for a fact that my teachers were pretty good because I did really well on standardized tests. They were, however, wrong about this. The rule makes perfect sense, of course, when earth is used as a synonym for soil. I get that. I picked up the rich earth. Uses the word as a common noun. But we're talking about proper nouns here. Earth is a place, as is the moon. Buzz Aldrin would certainly agree. And while no one especially wants to go to the sun, the fact that you can go there, at least theoretically, is telling. Some argue that the real issue is that the proper names for these three bodies are Terra, Luna, and Sol, and maybe that's okay, but it's really nothing other than Roman cultural imperialism, which as an English speaker and a Protestant, I am almost duty bound to reject. The rule has its exceptions. You may capitalize Earth if it is contained within a list of other celestial bodies which themselves must be capitalized, and it turns out that list potentially includes absolutely all of them, aside from the three that are of the greatest importance to humans. By this rule, it is proper to write, I like it here on Earth, without capitalizing the word, and indeed improper to do otherwise, even if in the very next phrase you write, especially here in Earth, Texas, which, believe it or not, is an actual place. How did this rule come about? Well, partly it's a result of the King James Bible's outsized impact on modern English. The King James, which capitalizes neither the words we're discussing, heaven, hell, nor even pronouns related to God, was published in 1611, more than a century before modern English capitalization rules began to develop. Dictionary.com helpfully adds that all this may be a throwback to those times in which people believed our world to be separate and fundamentally distinct from the rest of creation, which is to say that if you're not capitalizing the name of our planet, you are pretty much a flat earther who still believes the sun revolves around the earth, neither of which is capitalized, of course. That sums up exactly how I've always felt, and I'm not alone in feeling that way. A quick Google search found uh, a complaint on the matter dating all the way back to January of 1886, recorded in Volume 31 of the Indiana School Journal. Yes, that's almost half a century before Robert Goddard invented his rocket. So this is not a new discussion but it's also not intended primarily as a discussion of grammar. Earth is a place, and thus Earth is and ought to be a proper noun. It is far from the only place. Thinking about it as though it is the only place limits humanity in ways that are increasingly foolish and inappropriate. We are leaving this cradle of civilization, and should be, as Tsiolkovsky said, one cannot stay in the cradle forever. To recognize that we live in a very specific place forces us to recognize that there are other places and that it might be valuable to go there. For Christians reading this, that is, after all, the essence of the creation mandate. It requires that we recognize that Earth really is special thus enhancing our sensitivity toward our responsibilities of stewardship, without allowing us to think of Earth as though it were the whole universe. It expands our ability to problem solve and how we think of ourselves and the rest of creation. It opens up possibilities we would never otherwise consider and encourages our own creativity in response. It adds perspective 
and with it, wisdom, two of our most vital needs and two of God's defining characteristics, attributes we desperately need to seek and to imitate. Yes, capitalization may be a small matter, but life is largely a collection of small matters, subtleties we rarely consider, but which collectively define us and the way in which we think and live. This is one of those. And as we enter a new era, like that in which the first explorers began to leave the shores of Iberia, go past Madeira, the Canaries, and the Azores, and venture around the Cape of Good Hope, and even as far as the New World, we need to alter our thinking, as our forebears once did. This is Rod Martin, coming to you from rodmartin.org.